Hello and thank you for joining me in this Mind Mastery video. Today's subject will be about the inner critic and what can we do in order to minimize its influence on our uh, internal well-being and external performance or simply life. So the common problems that arise as a result of excessive self-criticism or simply having this very big part of ourselves that is very critical of ourselves and our external life Common problems can include things like self, low self-esteem, uh, avoiding certain opportunities, avoiding relationships, um, not being able to move forward in life and embrace various challenges and opportunities. So inner critic usually prevents us from moving outside of our comfort zone in order to keep us in this one specific place, uh, which I'm going to go to in, in a minute. But the role of the critic is a little bit more complex than this, because if we take a look at the origin of, of the, the inner critic, it could be approached from the perspective of psychoanalysis. So the inner critic could be easily associated with superego. So things like internalized morality and the code of conduct, things that we can do in order to avoid punishments. And this mechanism that simply is about keeping us uh, in a position of a sort of underdog that sort of gives up uh, the power to external forces or to some other forces, let's say. So what we can say about the, the inner critic is this, that it's all about power in a sense, uh, because when you were criticized as a child, let's say, by your parents, by your peers, by, I don't know, some other figures of, of authority, essentially it was a play of power. You've done something wrong, so the other person felt in a way threatened or perhaps they didn't approve of your behavior. So what they had to do in order to punish you or make sure that you're never going to repeat this behavior again is to take away this power from you so that you're not going to go into that direction anymore. And the way they've done it, it was usually through like, criticism, punishments. So, you know, it's very culture specific and we all have many different experiences of, of how this experience of being punished or being criticized uh, expressed itself in, in our childhood. And of course, I'm not going to go into details about uh, what sort of behaviors we're punished for, what sort of behaviors we thought like we uh, we didn't perform well or what sort of things we failed at because it's a very unique thing um, and very specific to each individual, obviously, because of our different experiences. So if we fast forward to adulthood, what happens when you make a mistake? Let's say that you mixed up um, an hour of, of your appointment with a friend. If your inner critic didn't exist, you would simply just apologized, went to an appointment or called that person, apologized, said, look, I mixed up the numbers, nothing happened. Perhaps that person would be angry with you. Maybe they would be critical. Maybe they would be somewhat punishing. It doesn't really matter. But without your inner critic, you would simply forget about this event. However, if your critic is quite strong, you're going to start punishing yourself. You're going to start saying that I shouldn't be doing that such a mistake. I'm a bad friend. I shouldn't be meeting with people. I should avoid people. You know, it really depends on each individual person how this inner criticism manifests itself. But the general rule is that the higher or the bigger your critic is, uh, the more influence it's going to have on your personality and your, your behavior and obviously your self-esteem. So... In that moment when this criticism happens, that part of you, I might call it superego, I might call it inner critic, that part of you takes away the power from your ego in order to, to grow itself in a sense. So when the critic criticizes you, it's in control. It has the power so that you can't really move forward in life. You can't make decisions because the critic is in, in power. And whatever you do is going to be wrong because... The critic is activated and going to start punishing you. So we can see that if we take this perspective of the power play that happened in childhood and that happens throughout all our lives in many different types of interactions, um, it's also present within your own mind, within your own internal dynamics. Um, 
if you of course agree with the idea that there are many different parts of your personality, there are many different parts of your mind really that interact with each other and give a rise to this um, experience what we might call I. If you've been watching my channel, you know that the perspective I, I embrace in my videos is this psychoanalytical version of how to view our mind, how to view our psyche, uh, which is to say that the ego is in control, ego is this rational part of you, is the adult self or the adult mode in you that enables you to make decisions, to look at things rationally um, and simply to make forward, to make right choices in life uh, and not react emotionally, not react, not overreact to certain circumstances. To go back to the subject of, of exchange of power or rather being robbed of power, when the critic is active and it manages to rob the ego from its power, it's going to take control of, of your behavior, at least temporarily. So what I've done in this video is I have I've identified five different games that the inner critic wants you uh, to play because by playing these games, you give away your power. You give your ego's power to the critic. And as a result of that, you're going to be suffering from things like low self-esteem, uh, inability to make right decisions, and not perhaps experiencing high levels of anxiety in certain situations and all sorts of things related to, uh, to in a way, dysfunctional ego or rather negatively influenced ego, uh, which can't function properly uh, as it should be as an adult. So the first game that your inner critic wants you to play is let's analyze what went wrong. In this scenario, imagine that You've been in some situation, perhaps you went out to meet some friends, perhaps you've been in some, some novel situation that you've never been before. Regardless of how well it went, after you finished with that event, you're going to start analyzing what went wrong. So what sort of negative things you've said, how weird you looked, what sort of things you've done or what sort of things you haven't done, and basically going to try to find out how many different negative things happened during that event uh, instead of being content with what happened or instead of learning the lessons that were uh, perhaps provided to you in that experience. So that's the game the inner critic wants you to play. And the moment you start going along with the critic and saying, yes, that went wrong, that went wrong, uh, you give away your power, you give away your personal power to the critic and your ego loses its power and at that moment things will go just wrong because your self-esteem will drop, your confidence levels will drop uh, and you're going to start questioning yourself, questioning whether you are competent, whether you are good enough and whether you can go through the same experience again in the future. So that's the first game. The second game is about predicting how you'll screw up your life. So instead of looking uh, towards the past, you're going to start looking towards the future and imagine all possible worst case scenarios that that's going to happen to you because you can't do this, you can't do that, you're not good enough, things were badly in the future, you're not really able to move forward, um, you know, things will just go wrong for you and there's no chance that you can live a happy life uh, like, you know, like a healthy individual, let's say, or like someone successful. So again, in this game, what happens is that um, imagine that everything goes well in life, in your life, uh, and you are achieving this and this and that. But, you know, doing so will not provide much power to the critic itself. So what has to happen for the critic in order to in order for it to kind of gain some power in, in this in this experience let's say it's going to invent this all these different scenarios that're going to go wrong wrong for you and how you're going to uh, destroy your life because you are not this and you are not good enough and you are not that so the, so that's the second game and obviously in order to to get out of it you need to recognize that this is a critic talking and the more you play the game, the more you entertain the idea that the critic might be right. Or even if you try to reason with it, it's not going to work. Because even if you try to reason with it or be compassionate towards it, you give it 
your attention and so you give it your power and it's gr- the, and the critic is going to grow uh, and obviously keep having an influence on your life. Now the third game is about finding out what is wrong with you. So not looking towards the past, not looking towards the future, but looking towards all possible defects that you might be having. It sounds ridiculous because we all have weaknesses, we all have different bodily def- defects, let's say, or things that we perhaps we don't fully like, or, or things that we not perceive as being perfect. But if we are well balanced, we are not going to pay that much attention to these things because nobody is perfect. And we all have different things that, you know, might be perceived through many different lenses. But each of us obviously has many different perspectives on, on, on this sort of issues. But this light or, or relaxed approach doesn't really work with a critic because inner critic is all about going into extremes. The approach of taking it easy or accepting yourself the way you are, despite what sort of imperfections you might be having. It's not something that the critic like because, again, it robs the critic of power. If you accept yourself, what's the point of, of having a critic? So the, crit- the critic is going to try to point out constantly what sort of things are not acceptable, what sort of things are wrong with you. It might be on the physical level, it might be on the mental level. And in order to keep uh, having you engaged in this game, it either is going to invent new examples constantly or it's going to keep obsessing over the same things over and over again in order to keep you entertained so that you can give your power to the, to the critic itself. Again, the game sounds quite ridiculous because it goes into extreme. Anything that goes into extremes, anything that is about black and white thinking, it belongs to the realm of the of the inner critic. And if we engage in this sort of cognitions, let's say, or the way we think, we give the power to the inner critic. Now, the fourth game I have identified is about how other people can ruin your life. So this time, instead of focusing on what's wrong with you, you're going to start focusing on what's wrong uh, with other people. So for example, let's say you meet a new group of people or you start to participate in some some events. Instead of going along with, with your experiences and learning new things, getting new experiences, meeting people, at one point, you're going to start to realize that I don't like those people. There's something wrong with these individuals. Or perhaps you're going to start growing mistrustful towards them and look and start looking for evidence how these people have a negative influence on your life. So perhaps getting a little bit paranoid even uh, about uh, how how other people can can have this negative influence and how can they, in a sense, ruin, lo- ruin your life if you keep associating yourself with them. And, and that's precisely the, the core of the game because if you are accepting towards yourself and you are able to go out and meet different people, and, you know, people keep talking to you, people want to meet up with you. It means that this self-acceptance works and it's not only one way, but also other people accept you. So this is not the way that critic likes things to be because, again, it doesn't provide it with any power. So what it has to do is to prove to you and provide you with evidence, even in, like, ridiculous details, that other people are bad for you, that they are negative influence, that uh, you shouldn't trust other people, that, I don't know, they're not good enough. And entertaining these possibilities or considering what what the critic is saying, uh, again, gives away your power. And here, just to clarify something, it doesn't mean that you have to colorize other people in only positive colors and, you know, completely trust everyone who, who appears on your way. But... Again, the inner critic is about black and white thinking and going into extremes. So in contrast to this approach, what would be probably healthy would be to keep a balanced view. So instead of saying that I either trust or I don't trust this person, try to find something something in between, like a gray area. In the same way, when you look at other people, instead of saying that mm, this person is good, this person is bad, there is a gray area, there is... A, 
a point of compromise between two, two extremes because people are much more complex than, uh, than, than this, than this black and white uh, perspective. And the fifth game I've identified is about proving to everyone that you don't deserve any sort of social interactions and social relationships. So this is sort of reversed uh, to, to the previous example, uh, where you still focus on the external world, but instead of seeing other people as being bad for you, you see yourself as being bad for people or simply having a negative influence on other people. So again, it, it comes back to this idea of self-acceptance. If you can't accept yourself, you think that other people will not be able to accept you either. The game is quite straightforward here. It, and it kind of links to, to these previous games about finding out what's wrong with you or how you're going to destroy your life. But this time it's focused on how this internal defects that you are having sounds ridiculous because it usually is are going to influence other people so what happens is that you're going to sabotage your relationships and various social interactions in order to prove to other people that you are not worthy of them or worthy of their attention and, and relationships and um, because when you do that you give your power to the critic and the critic wins and it can continue controlling your life. And the, the, the very fact that you take this, that you engage in these behaviors, that you consider it even the remote possibility that other people are disgusted by you, or they don't like you, or you are not worthy of, of positive human interactions, even if you start entertain, entertaining these ideas, it already provides the power to the critic. And the more you do it, the bigger the critic gets. And the bigger it gets, the bigger its influence is going to be on your well-being and ability to simply manage your life. So these are five metaphorical games that I've identified through my own experience and working with different clients and reading various books as well. Now, I realize that this is just an overview. This is just an overview of what the inner critic can do. There are many different perspectives on the inner, inner critic and obviously we all have many different experiences. But the point is to recognize what sort of things your inner critic does in order for it to gain control over you and to gain the power. Because each time you engage with a critic, you give away your power. There is no negotiation with the critic. There's no discussion. There's no compassion. There's nothing. Uh, you have to let it go in order to be free from it and move forward in life. There's no other way for your um, development or recovery or whatever you're engaged in. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. And as usual, if you have any questions or comments, or if you would like to work on your own inner critic with me, please send me a direct message or drop the comment just below the video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.